Green Transportation and Heavy Machinery, a Paradox. مرحبا and welcome back to the second episode of Let's Talk Mobility by Alphotame Automotive. Today we have Karen Vincent, the Chief Sustainability Officer at Volvo Group. We're going to discuss machinery, we're going to discuss buses and trucks and electrification. <laughs> What's your car? Is it petrol, electric, or hybrid? Petrol, but most likely we'll tra- transition it to a hybrid. Petrol. My car is petrol. Petrol. I drive petrol. Uh, right now my car is petrol. My car is electric. Petrol car, but I'm trying to move towards an EV. Mine is a petrol one. I still have a petrol car. My car is petrol right now. My car is hybrid. Have you ever used an electric bus before? I've used an electric bus back in India, yes. Electric bus, electric car, yes, I have used before. مرحبا and welcome to the second episode of Let's Talk Mobility by Alphotain Automotive and the second episode we're going to discuss heavy material, trucks, buses and way more talk more about this we have, I have with me here Karen Svensson from Volvo Cool to discuss more about this Karen, welcome to COP28 welcome, welcome to our start thank you so much let me start directly with you Usually trucks, buses, uh, heavy machinery, and sustainability, it's a bit of uh, like odd. Like people, they, do, they were never thought of having an electrified buses or trucks or these heavy machinery. Can you elaborate more about where do we stand with electrifying such, a, such machines? Definitely. I think, first of all, I would like to, to start with uh, talking a little bit about our ambition. So we have as an ambition to become net zero by 2040. Uh, And to do that, we have uh, committed to the science-based targets and we have set interim targets for 2030. That means that we need to understand where our emission comes from. So when we look upon a value chain, we can see that more than 95% of our emissions actually come from the use phase. So when our products are in use. And that's is why electrification is such an important part of our strategy to decarbonize, because that's what's going to make the big difference for um, trucks and buses on the road if we can electrify them. And that we do either via battery electric driveline or a fuel cell electric driveline that is to come a little bit later this decade. The fuel cell electrifications, it's coming. It's coming, yes. It's an evolving technology. Yeah. And so as a Volvo group, it's considered to be uh, on the pipeline. Yes. What about other other uh, wave of energies such as hydrogen, for example? Is it something like a cure to Volvo Group to include it in the future? Yeah, we, we actually talk about our three-pronged approach. And in that, we say that electrification, either by battery electric or fuel cell electric, is sort of the key. But we also think that there is still a room uh, or a role to play for the internal combustion engine. And then you could actually put hydrogen into the internal combustion engine and by that then make it fossil free. So it's something coming in the pipe yet. Yes. It's not here yet. It's not here yet. But you can actually already today buy uh, any kind of electric truck if you want. Our viewability to the cities, uh, we've seen that uh, the green uh, public transportation, uh, it's not there yet. There is so much room for improvement towards public transportation. Uh, what discussion can Volvo uh, Group expect on this? I think that first of all, I think public transportation in itself is actually a sustainable solution. It's better than everyone going in their own car. So in that sense, it is sustainable. Uh, but then, of course, we're working on different solutions uh, to electrify. So we have sold hybrid buses since 2008. We have sold electric buses for cities for more than 10 years. And as the Volvo Group, I think our biggest role is that we can help cities, operators, authorities, governments, etc., to help them to understand what is needed really to electrify their bus fleet, if we take that as an example, to set up uh, a public transportation system. So we are very in many different types of dialogues on this topic. Since we're talking about the, the relations between uh, Volvo Group Add partners, let me call them partners. How do you view your partnership with Alzheimer? How do you view your partnership with the government sector in general and NUE? 
partnership is the new leadership, as our CEO likes to talk about it. Uh, we think that partnership is crucial for us, uh, especially now in this transformation. Uh, and that means that we need to have partnerships with partners like Alpha Tay. We need to have partners in governments. We need to partner up with suppliers, with uh, our employees, with the um, customers. We actually even have to team up with our competitors to get this transition moving. With, with the? With our competitors. Competitors, okay. Yes. Such as, can we name them? Yes. Uh, an example of that is that one of the big prerequisites actually for putting um, uh, electric electrified trucks on the road is that we have charging infrastructure. And today there is almost no public charging for electric trucks. So we have formed a joint venture together with Trayton to deal with Daimler Truck, where we are to build charging infrastructure. We will start in Europe. Uh, to build 1,700 charging points together to make sure that actually we all can sell and transform into electrified transportation. Usually with trucks and buses, there is a lot of steel, a lot of iron in the production phase. What's your take into uh, lowering the CO2 in the production phase? It, uh, that's a very interesting thing. Actually, today, a truck, 70% of the weight of a truck comes from steel and cast iron, and in a machine, it's even more than that. So it's really crucial to take down CO2 and move towards fossil-free steel. So we have since now some while um, a very unique partnership together with SSAB, the Swedish steel manufacturer, where we have um, together with them developed fossil-free steel. We have made a prototype. Within less than a year, we were actually able to put it into a machine, give it to a customer, and now we have introduced it uh, into our electric trucks. So if you buy an electric truck today, we are going to be um, introducing fossil free steel in those and also in some of our machines going forward. And this is goes into the whole lineup. Yes. And uh, this impacted uh, the, the, the CO2 that goes out from the factory. Definitely, definitely. For the first time ever for me personally, to be able to see uh, a fully electrified excavator coming from Volvo. Can you give us more details around this uh, this new movement, uh, this heavy machinery to be electrified? Yeah, we, we actually launched our first electric machine already in 2020. Uh, and uh, now we're really, really proud that we can present also in this region a fully electric machine together with Alpha Tain. This is a bit of a smaller version, but we can actually have electric machines up to 23 tons. And uh, usually people, like the workers, they will charge it during uh, their break or, or during the evening. Like it supports supercharger. Yeah, actually, if you have a supercharger, you can charge it during your lunch break. It, it will only take you like four to five minutes. Or then when you leave the machine at night, if you do that, you can charge it overnight. And then, so the performance is the same as if this would have been a diesel version, but the work environment is much better for the operator. We know that from, from a fact that operators like it. It's less vibrations, it's less noise. From an emission perspective, of course, it's much better. And also for the surrounding, it's quiet. The usability of the eyes and the, they're, they're used to fuel it and then go back to work? They don't... No, 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 not what we've heard. And I think... Uh, we see the same pattern also for trucks and buses that the, the operators or the driver, they really like the experience. How important, Karen, to get the right partners, whether it's coming from a government uh, or coming from uh, road uh, transportation authorities as a Volvo group, how important it is to get into this kind of partnership? Yeah, I think it's, it's actually the thing for the transformation that we are not going to be able to do this transformation ourselves. We need a complete ecosystem that moves in pace, if I can say it like that. Because if we are to decarbonize, it's going to be so many things that needs to come into place. So we need to cooperate with different partners around different topics. We need to, we need to cooperate in new ways. We need to cooperate in um, new areas and we need to cooperate with new partners. And we do these cooperations sometimes because we want to speed up things. We are, for example, um, in, a big co in a big partnership with something called First Movers Coalition. There we're using our purchasing power to say that 
there are technologies that are today maybe just in innovation or in prototype phase. But we can say that we are prepared to pay a premium price, for example, for fossil free steel. And we say we're going to buy a certain level at a certain date. And then that makes it possible to bring these technologies to the market in a cost competitive way. So I think that's an example of a cooperation or a way that we need to cooperate. We need to take risk together with our partners in a new way. That means we need to trust our partners in new ways. And then together we can sort of form this uh, ecosystem that is needed in order for uh, transportation to become sustainable in the future. How do you view building this kind of ecosystem nowadays and our current situation uh, compared to 30 or 50 or 20 years back? Yeah, I think if we go back, then we could develop, you know, the world's best truck or the world's best construction equipment machine and then we sold it and then that's it. Today, in order for us to be successful, we need this cooperation. So we need to, uh, as I said, we need to trust and we need to, we can't talk about suppliers in the same way. We need to talk about partners much more. So we need to work together uh, with uh, our industry players in a, in a much higher degree. How do you view the future of AV machinery, buses and trucks in the coming 10 years, let's say? My hope is that if we are to meet again in 10 years, that the prerequisites uh, that we are now talking about is actually in place. We see public charging infrastructure, we see access to renewable energy. We see that we have a policy landscape that makes it possible actually to uh, accelerate electrification. So that then our ambition of, for example, in 2030 to have 35% of everything we sell to be electric, then we need these prerequisites in place. And I have a big hope that actually that will happen in, in 10 years from now. What's hindering Volvo Group in uh, coming out with all the machinery and the pucks? In the, in, the, in the current situation? If we talk about electrified vehicles and machines, I think we normally talk about there are four prerequisites in order for uh, electrification to happen. First of all, there needs to be vehicles and machine, and I think we can say that is there. The second thing is public uh, charging infrastructure of different kinds. We see that there is a big need to increase charging infrastructure. Uh, the third thing is access to renewable energy that is needed in order to build charging infrastructure, but it's also needed for fossil free uh, steel, for example, it's needed in our uh, factories and operations all over the world. And last but not least, we need a policy landscape that is um, adapted to electrification. So uh, to put it very easy, if you are an operator or a buyer of a truck, uh, it needs to be either less expensive or not at least more expensive to drive one kilometer on electricity than to drive one kilometer on diesel. And today that's not really the case. So that's also something that the policy landscape needs to work on. If we are discussing the future, what what models of trucks and heavy duty machinery that all the group is planning to introduce in the coming few years? One thing that we are looking into is fuel cell electric vehicles. And that's something that we think will come sort of towards the end of the decade. But already today, we have a full lineup of trucks. And as we have discussed, we also see that now machines have been electrified. And on the bus side, there's also more or less what is needed. Do you find it easier to sell more electrified buses compared to heavy machinery? Or more practical compared to heavy machinery? I think that uh, on the bus side, we started pretty early. So it's a more mature market, I would say. And, you know, buses are often sold with under public procurement. So I think we have a very good uh, relationship with cities where we can discuss and we can set up this transport system. But we also see a great interest to electrify also on the construction equipment side. So we are, of course, hoping that that will take off also. And, and one word. How how do you how do you describe sustainability from your perspective? Yeah, I think if I only got to choose one word, I would choose hope. Because I think that sustainability to take climate, environment, but also people into account. Um, I think if we work with that, uh, I think and then I hope that actually that will make it possible for our generation to live a good life, but also for future generations to live a good life.
Thank you very much, Karen, for your time for the day. Thank you, our viewers and our listeners at Let's Talk Mobility, powered by Alpha Team Automotive. This is our second episode, and as you've seen today, we've discussed Volvo Group. Stay tuned for more episodes to come from COP28. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you.